Right, so here we are after qualifying for the 2019 Austrian Grand Prix. And today we're going to go through the results of said qualifying session. And it was a very exciting and at times surprising qualifying session in Austria. At, of course, the Red Bull ring. And now let's first, before we get into the teams and look at how they did, let's first get into those results. So, Charles Leclerc gets his second ever pole position. Lewis Hamilton finished up in P2. Max Verstappen was P3. Then it was Bottas P4. K-Mag P5. P6, Lando Norris. Then Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Gasly and Vettel completing the top 10. Getting knocked out in Q2 was Grosjean, Hulkenberg, Albon, Ricardo, Sainz. And knocked out in Q1 was Perez, Stroll, Kvyat, Russell and Kubica. But now let's get into those teams. First off, Mercedes. I think they will be disappointed with the end result because P2 and P4, even though I think they knew Ferrari were going to be very quick this weekend, I didn't think that they would have been expecting that. And I think they would have been expecting also to be a bit quicker, of course, when it matters most in qualifying. Lewis Hamilton didn't have... The best qualifying. Um, Q3 for him wasn't that great. His first attempt was not that good at all. Second attempt was good. And I think honestly, given how quick Charles Leclerc is in that Ferrari, I think honestly Lewis did the best he could today. Valtteri Bottas, though, you have to say, very poor. He should not be out qualified by Max Verstappen in a Red Bull car that is not really competitive with... Bottas's car so I'm sorry but Valtteri Bottas today not good enough and if he wanted to capitalize on Lewis Hamilton you know possibly messing up qualifying well he did not but Lewis Hamilton might receive a grid penalty for blocking Kimi Raikkonen during the first part of qualifying so maybe their qualifying result will get worse than this. We'll have to see. But I think for the race tomorrow, if they do start from P2 and P4, they can absolutely still come away with another race win in 2019. Now let's go on to Ferrari. Charles Leclerc, first off, he was great today. He's been great this weekend. This is one of his best tracks in the entire world, really. Very quick this weekend. The Ferrari car also very quick because they are so good at power dominant circuits. And this is a power dominant circuit. So yeah, Ferrari and Charles Leclerc, a superb combo, you have to say today. And I think Leclerc absolutely deserved to get pole position because he has just been consistently so quick at the very top of the timesheets. But Sebastian Vettel again another disaster in qualifying this time I believe because of damage sustained to his floor that's why he did not go out in the final part of qualifying and that's why he has ended up in P10 and the possibility of him getting onto the podium or even winning the race is pretty much now slim to none and it is a shame for Vettel but there you go that is the way things are sometimes but for Ferrari for tomorrow can they third time lucky this season after getting pole go and get the win we'll see what happens tomorrow on race day next up is Red Bull and for me driver of qualifying has to be Max Verstappen because to get that car into the top three considering how slow it has been in the last couple races at tracks where power is important is is unbelievable it's absolutely unbelievable that he has done that and with the tires he's starting on for tomorrow's race you never know he could be right in there for p2 or p3 i think most likely though he will be going for p3 for a result at the end of the race but Great performance by Max Verstappen and continues to show why he has been, for me, so far this season, the best driver on the grid. But, but for Pierre Gasly, you have to say, very, very poor once again. P9, getting out qualified by a Haas, a McLaren and both 
Alfa Romeo cars. I'm sorry, that is not good enough. And my video from a fortnight ago is continuing to be proven right. Pierre Gasly, eventually, by the end of this season, should be dropped from Red Bull. And he is absolutely, categorically, not good enough for Red Bull. And I don't think I have to say any more. Because we know that Gasly, at this point, is, is just crap. He really, really is. But now... Let's go on to the midfield. Renault first off. Not a good qualifying. P12 and P14. Hulkenberg does have a penalty for the race tomorrow. So he will start uh, near the back. But yeah, not great for Renault. Their qualifying two performance was compromised by traffic. So I kind of do feel sorry for them. But you have to say this weekend they just haven't had a quick enough car. Alpha and McLaren look as though they have clearly faster cars than Renault this weekend, and arguably, so do Haas. So, not good enough for Renault. I mean, I thought after Canada and France that Renault were really turning a corner, but it seems as though they are not, and they are really now falling behind, you know, a team like McLaren in that battle in the constructors. And a result like this, I'm sorry, again, quite frankly, like Pierre Gasly, is not good enough for this works team. Hopefully it gets better tomorrow, but I don't think it really will. Next up is McLaren. Lando Norris did well today. He would have been slightly disappointed to be out qualified by Kevin Magnussen in the Haas, but let's be honest, Kevin Magnussen is an absolute beast when it comes to qualifying. So I guess he won't be massively disappointed, but at least because Magnussen has a gearbox penalty, Lando will start for now P5 for tomorrow's race. And you never know, he could finish in the top five in the race because the McLaren car is very quick. And also, I think the drivers behind, he does have a good enough car and pace in himself to beat them as well, except, of course, for Sebastian Vettel. So looking good for him. Carlos Sainz, P15. We knew he had a grid penalty for this race and he would be starting at the back. So, yep, he'll be starting at the back and hopefully for him he will come through the grid tomorrow. But McLaren, you have to say, I think they do have, again, the best car in the midfield. And I think that will be really showcased in tomorrow's race in Austria. Next up is Alfa Romeo. Great day for them, P7 and P8. That'll be P6 and P7 because of Magnussen's penalty. And Alpha, you have to say, this weekend has been their best weekend of the season so far. It's been very similar to Baku in terms of speed. And Baku, of course, they both had to start the back because of penalties for different reasons. And with how they were in Baku... With the pace they had, which was very strong as they still scored points with Kimi Raikkonen, I think tomorrow Alpha could be very, very strong. And I wouldn't be surprised if both drivers scored a good amount of points and really brought the team up in that Constructors' Championship battle. So, great day for Alpha and hopefully it continues tomorrow and it probably will because Alpha tend to be better on a race day than they do in qualifying. Next up is Haas, who I am pleased to say are better than they were in France. France was their worst weekend in their history in Formula One, but today was a good day. Magnussen fifth, again, as I said earlier, absolute beast he is in qualifying. Shame about the penalty, but that's just the way it is. At least he will start still in the top 10. Uh, Grosjean P11, I think he did all right today, Grosjean, but still I don't think Roman at the moment is quite doing enough to firmly keep that seat going forward into 2020. And I think Roman and the team will be disappointed with where he ended up. But going into the race tomorrow, I think honestly Haas will still struggle. I know they are quicker this weekend, but... We know what their race pace is like. So yeah, expect a pointless finish, I think, for Haas from the race tomorrow. Then you have Toro Rosso, who 
had a very poor qualifying. Albon, of course, we know is starting at the back. He qualified in P13, but yet starts at the back, so his qualifying was pointless. And Kvyat qualified in 18th. And the reason he did was because he was massively put off and basically blocked in qualifying by the Williams of George Russell. And I think Russell will absolutely get a penalty for what he did because he could have caused a crash, could have Russell. So very unlucky there for Kvyat, but sometimes that's what happens in qualifying. It's very close at this circuit, as we know, when it comes to uh, backing off to start your lap and coming across other drivers who are trying to start their lap and stuff like that. So it's a shame, but there you go. Uh, but for the race tomorrow, if Kvyat can have a decent start, I think Kvyat can get near the points. Say P12, P13 and not be that far off. So not looking awful for Toro Rosso in terms of pace, but their grid position, of course, is not what they wanted. And finally, from the midfield is Racing Point, who do have absolutely the worst car in the midfield, P16 and P17. On the grid, the only reason Kvyat is behind is because Kvyat got blocked. So yeah, Racing Point do have the worst car in the midfield. The only positive is that because Hulkenberg, Sainz and Albon, who qualified ahead of them, now have to go backwards because of the penalties. The only positive is that Racing Point will now start higher up than they normally would. So that might be a small little good omen for tomorrow's race because we know Racing Point on a race day do make a bit of progress, especially Lance Stroll. So I guess that's positive. But again, as we've said, Racing Point really do not, when it comes to qualifying, have a good car at all. But there you go, guys. That is qualifying, of course. Williams are at the back. What else to say about them? But yeah, that is it for qualifying. And I think we are in definitely for a better race tomorrow than we did have in France and good news it looks as though we are going to have more than one driver and one team going for the win at the Red Bull ring.